Oh, you, you're here. <laughs> uh, hello. In this video, we're going to look at the somewhat forgotten isolation CSS property and how it can help when working with mixed blend modes or combating Z-index issues in the layout. Introducing the isolate utility class added to Tailwind CSS version 2.1. Let's go. Okay, so we've got two circles here that are overlapping and then both of these circles are overlapping another shape in the background. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to apply a mixed blend mode to this circle and see what happens. There's a video dedicated specifically to mixed blend modes, but here I'll just apply mix blend and we will go with darken. And you can see a darker area where the two circles intersect. Now I'm going to switch the mix blend mode from darken to lighten. And wait, what? Looks like we still have our overlapping area, but the rest of the circle has disappeared. So to help you understand what's happening, I'm going to change the background color of this rectangle. So I'll come up here and from BG gray 200, we'll switch this to BG gray 700. Whoa, and now we've got some of our circle back, but not all of it. What you may start realize now is that when we apply the mix blend mode to this circle, it did not only blend with the other circle, but also with any other element that is overlapping should it be behind the element, so like this rectangle here. The lighten mix blend mode will always result to the lightest of the layers we're blending together. So this is why here, now that our rectangle is darker than our circle, this is the lightest part and this is the one that shows. Fun fact, in this composition, there's yet another layer that's blending together and it's the background of the entire viewport here. So up here we have background white and let me change that to background red 500. And now our green here is being blended with the red resulting in this light orange color. All right, so I'll go back to BG white on the body element and back to BG gray 200 like we had at the start for this rectangle. And now what do you do when you actually don't want to blend the element with everything that's beneath it, but maybe just another thing that it's overlapping with? Well, this is where the isolation CSS property comes handy. Tailwind CSS gives you an isolate utility class that is helpful to tell an element that you do not want the mix blend mode to blend with anything below that element. So that's our gray rectangle element here. So if I come in the child and I go isolate here, I'm now going to scope the mix blend mode to only these elements. And so we should technically stop blending with the gray 200 background and the white background. Okay, so now we have the full circle again, and it's only blending with the overlapping element that is above this div that we've put the isolate on, which is between this and the rectangle and background. Now, if I move this isolate class here and I move it on the rectangle itself, now we're allowing our circle to blend with this rectangle here, but still not the background because the isolate layer is blocking the background from blending with this screen here. Let's change the background color of our rectangle back to gray 700. And because we have an isolate class applied to this rectangle, we're not allowing this part of the circle to blend with the white background. If I remove this isolate class here, we are now allowing this portion of the circle to blend with the background. And because the background is white and we use the lighten mix blend mode, the color of the background is what results here and down there. Okay, let me bring back the isolate class. And I'll show you how you can undo or counter what the isolate class does uh, at a different breakpoint or say maybe on hover. So the isolate class is applying isolation isolate and there's another value for isolation, which is auto. Let's say we want this element to be isolated by default, but then on hover, we want to undo this with isolation auto. And I need to quickly enable the hover variant for the isolation plugin. You can skip that step if you're using the just-in-time mode. And now here on hover, I will go isolation and as you can see, auto. So by default, we see the full circle and we don't let this section here blend with the background. But as soon as I hover, we should remove the isolation with isolation auto. And as you can see now, the background blends once again with the circle. Preventing mixed blend modes from getting a little too blend happy is one use case for the isolate utility class. There's another great use case for this utility, solving Z-index issues by creating an isolated stacking context. Let's take those five circles that look a lot like the Olympic rings. If we look at the code for it, this is what it looks like. And you can notice that each ring has a different Z-index value. 
Now down here, we also have an absolutely positioned div that's currently hidden. So I'm going to remove the hidden class. And now we have this yellow band that's displayed behind our Olympic rings. Now let's assume that this div also had a Z index value. So we'll go with Z 10. Okay, now we have four rings above the yellow band, but the green ring has shifted behind it. And let's change the Z index value to Z 20. So now the two bottom rings have shifted behind and so on. If I go to Z index 30, now we have three rings behind the yellow band. Okay, these rings represent a fairly iconic symbol and we probably don't want to show them like this with half of them in front and half of them behind an element. We really want to keep them together as a group, as a unit, as a symbol. And whatever happens, we want them to always show on the same level in front or behind of other elements. So the way you can ensure that these will always display together on the same level is by giving them their own stacking context. Stacking contexts are the source of a lot of confusion. There are many ways that you can create a new stacking context, but some of the approaches feel really strange and awkward. So say we want to create a new stacking context for this block of HTML, so all our rings sit together in the same layer. Like I mentioned, there's many different ways to create a new stacking context, but many of those really feel like a workaround, if not a flat out hack. So here's a fun one for you that I don't recommend using, but check this out. I'm going to apply an opacity utility class here, opacity 100. And as you can see, the rings are still staggered behind and in front of this band. But if the opacity value is anything less than 100%, so 95 here, now we've generating a new stacking context and our rings are all together in the same layer. If I remove that, the rings move back in front and behind the band. That doesn't feel like the best approach, right? Same deal with mix blend mode. So if I go mix blend screen, once again, we have a stacking context. So those are not the best way to implement stacking context. And one of the most common approaches that people use to do this is to give the element a position property of something else than static. So for example, something you see often is position relative. But position relative by itself is not enough. You also need to give the element a Z index value so maybe here we can go Z zero. And now a new stacking context is created. And remember we need both the relative and Z index classes together. If I remove the relative class, Z zero by itself is not going to create a new stacking context. And like we've seen before, if we only have relative but no Z index, same deal, no stacking context we still have to define a Z index, which somehow feels like a side effect. All we really want to do is tell these elements to be in the same stacking context without doing anything else. And this is exactly what the isolation property or the isolate utility class in Tailwind helps us do. So I'll remove the relative class here. And now I'm going to apply a single utility isolate. And by itself, this utility class is going to ensure that all these rings now sit in the same stacking context without defining a Z index value for the group. The key difference here is the actual role of the isolate utility is to create a new stacking context on the element to which it's applied. Whereas with the other approaches, you happen to end up with a new stacking context as a result of applying different properties to different elements. This feels like the proper way when you really just need a new stacking context to create one. All right, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.